Good morning, Hope United Methodist Church. It's Sunday, January 14th, and I am sad that we can't be together in person this morning, but um, but I'm glad and, and praying that you are home and staying safe. I want to share with you a story that happened to me in the last just couple of days, um, and I want to read some scripture with you this morning and also say a prayer. You might hear my dog who's right here, Dolly. Uh, you might hear the grandfather clock that's right next to me. Um, it's a little different than normal, but oh, hello there. Um, <laughs> the scripture I want to share with you this morning is from the book of Galatians, Paul's letter, chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 9, and 10. It says, my brothers and sisters, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you don't know what a blue stone moment is, that's the language we use to talk about moments in our lives, in our everyday lives, when God shows up. God can show up in people, in items, in um, situations, in vehicles, I don't know, lots of things. So I wanted to tell you about a blue stone moment that happened just yesterday in our church parking lot on Friday night with a, a team of church staff and some folks from our church leadership team, I had asked them to help me make the tough decision to cancel our in-person worship for today. A few things had to be accomplished after we made that decision. I needed to write up an email and the announcements for radio and news stations. I asked our friend Sigourney to go up to the church on Saturday morning to send the email to our entire church list and to put a sign up on the door in case anybody came on Sunday morning. Then, on Saturday morning, I received a call from Sigourney that she had made it to the church building to send the email, but her car was stuck in a drift as she entered the church parking lot. And if you've been out of your house at all, you have probably seen these large drifts that, like the one we had in our parking lot. So Eric and I, we bundled up, drove the few blocks down the road to start shoveling her out. We shoveled for maybe two minutes before someone in a silver truck started to drive by. He stopped and he put his truck in reverse and he backed up and then said to Eric and I, he said, scooch over. So we did. And then this guy was able to use the plow that was on his truck to scoop the snow behind Sigourney's car quicker for us. He then got out of his truck. He grabbed his snow plow out of his bed and started plowing around Sigourney's car, which as you know, went a lot faster than Eric and I, mostly Eric, uh, shoveling around Sigourney's car. After a few minutes, I was able to get in Sigourney's car to back it out and it was still stuck. So then this new friend of ours, he hooked up her car and two seconds later, the car was out and ready to run again. Eric and I both asked him for his name. We asked him if we could pay him. He declined and he wouldn't tell us his name. He wouldn't receive any payment. I said to him, but you're our angel. And he said, no ma'am, I'm just doing my job. It was such a joy to have him show up to help. We would have spent much longer digging than he, uh, we did with his help. He showed up right when we needed him. It really did feel like we were seeing an angel. And maybe that was in part because it was, you know, negative two degrees out. But I think he was just 
in the right moment at the right time. He was simply living the, the scripture that we read every week, texts like Galatians, where Paul reminds us to bear the burdens of others and to take care of everyone, texts like Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, where we're instructed not to neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Friends, even in blizzards, even in weather like this, God finds a way to show up. And thanks be to God, Eric and I and Sigourney, we all had a front row seat. Let's spend a moment in prayer. Glorious God, we worship you as the creator and sustainer of the universe. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are our savior and our teacher. We pray this morning that we might find you in the strangers we meet, in the friends we've known for years, in the snow that falls gently, in the warmth you grant us. Lord, help us live as angels who offer blessings to others. Help us live as if every person we meet is an angel, awaiting the gift of your grace. And fill us with the fruits of your kindness, the fruits of your spirit, fruits of joy and peace, patience, gentleness, and self-control, for these are the gifts that guide us closer to you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, I pray you stay warm, you stay home these next couple of days, and we will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.